Hello! In this video, we'll take a walk through an example of hooking an accelerometer to a microcontroller over SPI. So we'll be using the uh, LIS3DH, which is a 3-axis accelerometer. It measures acceleration in the x, y, and z axes, and it's configured with a full scale of up to 2 to 8 g's. It uh, sends the data over a 16-bit interface over SPI um, for each axis with a sensitivity of as little as 1 millig. Uh, the chip comes in this 16-pin land grid array package, which is pretty sturdy. It needs to be if you're uh, bouncing the thing around at 8 g's. Um, but they're very difficult to solder yourself because the uh, pads are underneath the chip. So uh, conveniently, Adafruit and SparkFun uh, make these boards that include the uh, chip and the supporting capacitors and resistors and then uh, some pins for uh, hooking this thing up to um, a breadboard. So this way we can easily get the fancy accelerometer onto a breadboard. So internally, uh, the uh, accelerometer is a pretty nifty device. It's got some microelectromechanical or MEMS cantilevers. These are beams of silicon that are actually etched out over a void in a tiny, um, s smaller than a square millimeter uh, piece of a chip. And uh, there's some capacitance. There's a conductor on the beam and another conductor underneath in the pit under the beam. And as you apply force to uh, the beam, as you apply um, an acceleration, the beam moves, it gets closer or further from the other plate, which changes its capacitance. And then there's a very precise analog to digital converter um, that um, senses that capacitance and reads out the acceleration. There's uh, some thermal expansion that takes place um, as temperature changes. And so uh, this device actually contains a temperature sensor as well to uh, compensate for the temperature. So it's a lot of technology packed away into a little chip, but from our point of view, it's just a box with an SPI interface, and we can send it commands to uh, configure its mode, and then send more commands to read the acceleration in each axis. And you see here, it's got both an SPI interface and an I2C interface. We'll be focused on the SPI. So here's how you could hook up the LIS3DH to a RED5 board. Uh, first of all, we always connect ground together, so we have common reference. The accelerometer needs a power supply, so we take the 3.3 volt output of the RED5 board, hook it up to the VCC pin of the uh, accelerometer. Be sure it's not 5 volts. 5 volts can cook this accelerometer. Then we need four more pins for the SPI interface. There's a serial clock going from the RED5 master to the accelerometer slave. There's master out slave in going to the accelerometer. And then the accelerometer sends back master in slave out. From the point of view of the accelerometer, MOSI is known as SDI and MISO is known as SDO for a slave data out. And finally, we have a chip select. Let's use pin 2. And um, that chip select needs to be low to uh, indicate that we're sending a message to the accelerometer. So the accelerometer itself actually has a set of internal registers, and the microcontroller can communicate with the SBI by uh, reading and writing those registers. So each register on the accelerometer has a 6-bit address and contains 8 bits of data. And to access it, we use a 16-bit SPI transaction. So the um, first bit is a read-write bar. It's a 1 to indicate read, a 0 for the write bar. Um, so 1 means read, 0 means write. Then there's a multiple or single bar uh, to say whether we want to be accessing multiple registers or a single register. Let's keep that at 0 to um, access a single register at a time. And then uh, to send a message, we need to make the chip select go low for all 16 clock cycles and we do two 8-bit SPI transactions. In the first eight bits, 
we send the read write bar and the um, uh, single mode and the six bit address of which register we want to access. In the second eight clock cycles, if um, we are doing a, a write, we send the eight bits of data to write. If we're doing a read, we get back the eight bits from the Excel outrunner. So breaking that down a little further, for a write, Again, we do two 8-bit transactions. Um, first, we send um, write bar is 0, because we want to write. Uh, single mode is 0. Then we write the 6-bit address of which register we want to talk to. And then we write the 8-bit data that we want to be putting into that register. We get back 8 bits, but they're meaningless, so we just discard those. Do an SPI read. Now the first bit is 1 for read. Next bit again is 0 because we're accessing a single register. We send 8 bits of which register we want to access. Sorry, 6 bits of which register. And then 8 more dummy bits. They could be all 0. Um, just to fill space. But what we're interested in is the 8 bits we get back that are the contents of that register we just requested. So let's take a look at what registers are on the SPI. Uh, first register is called Who Am I? And this is a great one to start with uh, to know if your SPI interface is working. So Who Am I is uh, register 0F. So the address is 001111. That's 0F. And uh, when we read from it, we should get the pattern back 00110011 or hexadecimal 33 or decimal 51. And if we get that back, we know our SPI interface is working. We're receiving data from the accelerometer. Once we know that the thing is working, we can write to the control registers to configure the SPI. And then we can read the um, output registers to measure the acceleration in X, Y, and Z. Now, the accelerometer is fairly high precision. It's got um, 0.001G resolution out of a full scale of 8 Gs. So we need 16 bits to represent the acceleration on each axis. So each axis has a high and a low H and L register that collectively contain the acceleration in that axis. So here's the Who Am I register. Um, this is showing the S clock. We see uh, 16 data pulses here, and six, sorry, 16 clock pulses. And then coming back from the slave, first it's all ones, but then we get a zeros, and we get two ones, two zeros, and two ones again. So that's 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 which is hexadecimal 33. That's what the who, is a, who Am I register returns. Uh, Mosey, um, for Who Am I, we needed to send um, the zero for our, sorry, we need to send a one uh, to for read zero for single mode, and then the Who Am I register is address 0F. So that's 001111. So this is what we send on the first eight bits of Mosey, and the next eight bits of Mosey are junk. They're all zeros or anything we wanted to send. Now let's take a look at some of the control registers. Control register 1 is at address 20, and that's used to turn on the um, axes and set the sampling uh, rate. So we need to enable the x, y, and z axes if we want to uh, measure acceleration in all three dimensions. So these are all ones. Um, we can uh, leave low power mode in zero. And then we can set the output data rate 
if we set it to 0, 1, 1, 1, that's this row, which allows us to sample at up to 400 hertz. So that's a nice fast sampling of the acceleration in each axis. We also need to set up control register number 4, and we can write into it 8 hex 88, which is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Um, so um, this 0 here is for SPI. Um, the next two zeros are for self-test mode, 0, 0 to disable the self-test. And then the 1 in high resolution means high resolution mode's on. We're getting a 16-bit value instead of an 8-bit value. Uh, full scale of 0, 0 means we're on a full scale of 2 Gs for maximum acceleration. BLE, big or little Indian, so uh, zero is we're going to uh, have the least significant bit of the data at the lower address. And then block data update with one, um, that means each time we read out the high and low bytes of an acceleration, the uh, next conversion will take place and update the uh, output the registers. All right, so Let's make this concrete and uh, see how we really use this. Um, we've got two output registers for each axis, and we need to read the 8 bits from each and combine them into a 16-bit twos complement number. And then the acceleration will be the value we read as a 16-bit twos complement number, minus some offset, because zero acceleration doesn't give exactly zero on this sensor, times some scale ideally so that full scale makes the full 2Gs that we set. But um, not all these devices are exactly identical, so if we want precision we should calibrate the offset and scale. And we do that by reading the accelerometer when it's level, and then when it's rotated by plus and minus 90 degrees in each axis. And that will tell us what the offset is when we're level, and what scale we need to go to full um, full G1G on any given axis. So let's look at some code to do that. We'll include our standard integer library and our easy red 5 io with the SPI calls we just talked about. And here's some code to uh, read and write the accelerometer. So to do a write, we take an 8-bit number specifying the address. Only 6 bits of that are meaningful and then an 8-bit value that we want to write to that uh, re register on the SPI. We'll uh, declare two 8-bit values that come back from SPI because SPI always returns something even if it's junk. On our system, uh, we need to, uh, remember we need to pulse the uh, chip select for the entire 16 bits. And the built-in uh, chip select control on our SPI port of this chip won't do that for us automatically. So we're going to take control of the chip select ourselves. We're going to, um, on another future page, we'll set uh, pin 2. Instead of being controlled by the SPI, we'll make it a GPIO output. And we'll write it to 0 to begin the transaction. So that's going to select the accelerometer. Then we'll send the eight, first 8 bits containing the address and the next eight bits containing the value. And the top two bits of that address include that RW flag and the uh, multi-single bar flag. Um, so if we write our value to the desired address, and then we turn off the chip select, and we can discard the high and low that came back because the write doesn't take anything back that we care about. For a read from the accelerometer, we take an 8-bit number containing the address and the rewrite flag. We um, also have two 8-bit registers again for the two things coming back. Uh, we pulse the chip select low. Then we're going to send the um, address or with a 1 in the most significant bit. So the address has six interesting bits then we put a 1 in the most significant bit to set read-write bar true.
indicate that this is a read instead of a write. Now we send another 8 bits of dummy information because we just needed 8 clock pulses to get the values back. The things that come back on that second 8 clock cycles uh, we'll put in a variable called low. Now we'll release the chip select and we'll return this 8 bits in low. This is a value we read from the register on the accelerometer. So here we can put it all together. Let's have an 8-bit register uh, to uh, see what come back from, comes back from who am I, and two 16-bit numbers for x and y acceleration. So we'll call that SPI init function. Uh, this should actually be SPI init of 15, 0, 0, uh, because we wanted to set the baud rate to 500 kilohertz and phase and polarity to normal. We will uh, prepare pin 2 to be an output. First, we'll set it to 1 so that we don't get any undesired pulse on the chip enable. And then we will do pin mode to set pin 2 to an output so that we can control it um, from SPI write and SPI read. Now, let's do an SPI read of register 0F, which is the Who Am I register. And we'll put that answer in debug you could look at that value in the debugger and you should see come back hex 33 which in the debugger will show up as decimal 51. Next we wanted to write to the uh, two control registers. Uh, register 20 we wanted to write 77 at that set the 400 hertz conversion and turned on all axes x, y, and z. And then to register 23 that was the other control register we wanted to send 88 put us in high resolution mode with a block update like we talked about a little bit ago. Now let's uh, do some uh, reads from the accelerometer. So we'll have a loop to just continuously read. Um, first to read the x-axis, the x um, low register was 28 and the high register was 29. So we'll read both of those. We'll shift the x high into the upper 8 bits and put x low in the bottom 8 bits and this way we get a 16-bit number representing the acceleration in the x-axis. Uh, we'll do the same thing for the y-axis. Um, we could do the z-axis as well but let's say we don't care about it. And then we have a small delay. Um, you could delay for 100 milliseconds, you could delay for a lot less than that because we're in the fast mode, we could go up to 400, kilohertz, 400 hertz, but here we're just sampling at 10 hertz every 100 milliseconds. Now in lab 8, uh, you're going to be building a digital level, and you'll start with the accelerometer code from the previous page provided to you, and your goal will be to take those two numbers of acceleration. Uh, calibrate your accelerometer so you know what zero g's is, what sitting flat on the table is, and what you get when you tilt the accelerometer in the x or y axis. And then you'll hook up an 8x8 eight eight LED matrix. Um, that has 64 LEDs. Um, to keep things simpler, we're only going to use 7x7 seven seven of them. Uh, so that we could have a dot that's centered when uh, your board is flat. And as you tilt it, let's say you tilt this side, the dot will move over to this side. Same way if you tilt this side, the dot will go that way. If you tilt it up, the dot could go up. So that will tell us whether our board is level in two axes. Um, and by using 7x7, seven seven, there's a center point. This means we're going to need 14 wires to hook up these LEDs, and you're going to need to figure out how to do that. And this is an example of a parallel interface, because from the um, red 5 board, you'll have 14 GPIOs going to the LED array, and you'll need resistors on some of these to make sure that you don't have too much current flowing through an LED and burn it out. So that concludes our example of using the SPI accelerometer.